Good afternoon and welcome to RDI Worldwide's virtual HR conference, People Matters. It's really great to have everybody with, uh, with us today. Thank you so much for joining. And I'm going to start uh, just before we get into our first session by explaining a little bit about what we've got in store for you today. So uh, my name is Gordon Dudley. I am the CEO of RDI Worldwide. And once again, thank you for, for joining to this uh, conference. We're gonna be getting started uh, in a little while as soon as I've introduced the, the schedule to you. So let me just bring this up. All right, so first of all, uh, a big welcome. And uh, this is uh, how the, the lineup of our speakers is looking uh, for the conference today. We have a wide range of speakers coming from a diverse range of backgrounds, both based both in and out of Korea. We're gonna be having uh, in total five sessions for you. And here is a detailed session, session overview um, as the, the lineup looks for, for the rest of the day. So the first session that we're gonna be starting very soon, will be focusing on HR tech. We're gonna be looking at the opportunities uh, for HR when it comes to HR technology and the integration of AI. And uh, we're gonna have a, a guest speaker who's a specialist in that area to tell us uh, a little bit about that. And we're gonna be discussing that area. After a short break, we'll move into a second session where we're going to be having uh, a guest speaker from uh, Coupang. Uh, and that session is gonna be focusing on talent acquisition. How is it that uh, when you're hiring at scale, you can adopt uh, fantastic HR strategies to try to uh, get the best possible talents. And we're gonna be hearing a lot about the fantastic story of Coupang becoming now Korea's second largest company. The third session of the day will uh, get a little bit more specialized in the area of Korean HR labor law. We're going to be having a panel discussion with three uh, experts, uh, a labor attorney and two um, HR directors from industry who are gonna be sharing their insights on some of the recent changes. We're gonna be going through uh, that, uh, some of the major changes that have come about in the last couple of years and discussing them um, in, a, in a panel discussion format. So I'm really looking forward to your uh, specific questions in that session. The fourth session of the day, we, uh, we go over to the UK where we'll be having a guest speaker live from the UK, um, a leadership, leadership coach. Uh, and that session is going to be focusing on the necessity of diversity and inclusion when it comes to future growth. A really important topic, uh, which is growing uh, in further importance, especially in Korea. And uh, that's going to be the fourth session of the day. Going into our fifth and final session, we will be having a global HR open Q&A. We have a special guest speaker uh, from, uh, again, from overseas, who's gonna be uh, joining us for that session. And we're gonna be talking about how uh, organizations, whether they are in the public or private sector, have been reacting to COVID-19 global pandemic and some of the implications for going forward in new organization structure and global HR management. That will be rounding off the, uh, the virtual HR conference that we have for you lined up. So please do uh, stick with us uh, through each of the sessions. Uh, we will be guiding you uh, from uh, each session uh, into the next one, sharing the, the link for that uh, in the chat. Uh, if you want to be keeping in touch with us, um, we do have uh, a lot of our social media going on. Um, probably for those of you familiar with RDI, we uh, do a lot of work on LinkedIn. Uh, look us up there, RDI Worldwide. For some of our Korean contents, we do have a neighbor blog. And also we're gonna be posting all of these contents that we're making today, these sessions on our YouTube as well. So there's plenty of areas for you to uh, get in touch, to get more valuable contents um, from us about uh, all, all the great things that we do. 
And so perhaps briefly uh, a little bit about um, RDI for, for those of you who are not familiar with, with us and, and who we are. Um, very warm welcome to anybody uh, coming to join us for the first time. So People Matters, uh, this is an event uh, that we wanted to run because we are a people company. We have uh, uh, essentially two primary services that we are uh, helping global companies in Korea with, namely recruiting and also uh, professional development uh, services. And what we are really doing is helping companies, whether they are small or large, to acquire best in class talents. We have uh, recruited on behalf of those uh, companies for uh, more than five years now in Korea. And we have also been delivering uh, our training services, whether that's a leadership development, uh, cross communication um, development, and uh, also a wide range of other professional development topics to help companies perform better uh, with their teams, whether that's an individual contributor at the team level, right up to the uh, to the uh, management of that particular company. So that's what we do um, in, in Korea. And now, of course, we are uh, delivering our services both online and offline in both a virtual uh, setting as well as face-to-face. Um, -face. This conference, uh, the People Matters event, is one that we wanted to uh, run in order to try to showcase some of the topics which we consider to be important but we also that we feel will be very useful and interesting for you, uh, no matter your background and no matter the uh, type of industry that you're working in. So that's uh, a little bit about uh, how the conference is, is going to be running. Um, I'm going to be uh, moderating uh, the, the sessions uh, along with uh, RDI's principal consultant, Eric Wan, who's going to be uh, running some of the sessions later on. So once again, thank you uh, everyone for, for joining this session and let's uh, take that opportunity to, run, to move into our first session um, today, which is all about uh, HR tech and the opportunities of HR. And to join us and uh, talk about that fantastic uh, area, uh, I'm really glad to be able to introduce uh, Unse Lee, so first of all, uh, welcome and say thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Great. And so uh, a little bit of, of an introduction to, to our guest speaker for this session. So um, Unse is a founder turned investor. Uh, he is currently uh, the managing partner of a newly founded LA based uh, VC. And this uh, early stage venture capital firm is focusing on Asian founders. And so he, as, uh, as an absolute kind of guru of uh, the, the startup ecosystem in Korea uh, and has been a real pioneer um, over the last few years of helping uh, many companies to, to grow their business, um, is a true expert uh, to be able to talk about this particular uh, topic. Prior to, uh, to establishing uh, his, his current company, um, he was the managing director of Techstars Korea. Um, a, an accelerator, which uh, he, he was uh, involved with for, for a number of years. And uh, he has also been a management consultant uh, in, in, a, in a former life, um, where he was leading multiple domestic and international uh, projects um, in high tech and ICT sectors. Um, not only is he a, an industry professional, he, he has also uh, been uh, teaching uh, academically um, at uh, the, the university that I graduated, uh, I'm very happy to say. Um, so he has also been teaching at Yonsei University uh, business strategy as well as entrepreneurship. Um, so, so now in his current role um, as the, as the uh, founder of uh, 541 Ventures, um, it gives me great pleasure to uh, be joined by Unse Lee uh, today for this session. Oh, wow. Well, I'm not sure I'm a, I'm a guru of this, but I'm certainly uh, part of the uh, ecosystem both in Korea and globally, and I'll be happy to share my, my two cents on HR Tech. So um, really, really a great pleasure to be here with you today. 
Excellent, excellent. And I think um, from, from my perspective, uh, as, as, as a person running an HR service company, uh, this was a topic that uh, is very, very kind of close to, to my heart in terms of the, the, the tech that we use, but also the experience that people both as uh, you know, HR managers, but also as job seekers, um, and also just as, as, as individuals in terms of um, charting that, uh, that, that uh, kind of getting a job uh, process, which for a lot of people is really quite, uh, quite a painful process. And so I thought it would be interesting to, to hear what are some of the uh, kind of developments that uh, we're seeing, some of the, the new areas of innovation that might be giving us uh, a better experience or, or a better kind of opportunity. Um, uh, maybe before we get into anything too specific, can you just maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, some of your perspectives when it comes to kind of HR tech as, as a kind of, uh, you know, it, it, these days everything wants to have tech on the end, right? Uh, every industry is trying, trying to be um, innovative and, uh, and get uh, tech, uh, tech startups involved. But in terms of HR, how do you see um, that as, as a kind of, as a standalone sector? Right. Um, that's a great question. Um, I'd like to first start with uh, my belief about like people, right? Um, I believe, I don't believe in a, a, a concept of a company as a, you know, sort of like physical entity. I believe that it's only an intellectual sort of concept, which means a group of people towards a certain like shared goal. That's my perspective on, you know, this, this HR, like people, um, you know, all these, these things, that's, that's the bottom line. And, and, and on top of that, um, at the intersection of tech, I think it's, it's only the right direction for the technology um, works in the space of HR, because, you know, that's, that's what technology, so that, that creates an added value to, to what we do, right? So there's that. And, um, I think we first need to talk about, um, um, you know, how the, the, the things have changed in the HR tech space, because HR tech itself is a very broad concept. And that depends on like which angle you take when you take a look at that, right? So um, when, I, when I think about HR tech, the first company, um, the frontier almost, um, that, I, that comes to my mind is surprisingly to some people, Craigslist. I'm sure many of you knows the company Craigslist. Um, Craigslist started back in um, 1995, if I remember correctly, by a name, uh, by a guy named Craig Newmark, and he moved to San Francisco and uh, to pursue a new career. And then um, he was just bored, right? So he created this mailing list. I mean, this was back in like 1995. So you know, back then there was a mailing list, right? Um, he created this mailing list to share information about social events with like random people. And along the way, he realized that well, actually people really appreciate the information about jobs, right? And he created this website called Craigslist, which is a very simple, very interesting UI, even up to this day. Um, people think it's just like a you know, smaller business or a smaller website. But if you take a look, like closer look, like uh, if I remember correctly again, um, in 1960, 19, I'm sorry, um, 2016 or 2017, the company had the revenues of almost $700 million and the employees was only 60. So that's a great business, right? That's what HR tech means, right? I mean, it, it creates lots of values for lots of people. And when you do it right, it's, it's great, right? So there was that. And with the, uh, the emergence of the internet, we saw uh, the emergence of the, the job sites like um, Indeed, um, Zip Recruiters in early, 20, uh, early early 20s. And LinkedIn was also founded back in 2003. So that was sort of the era of uh, sort of uh, the first real generation of um, HR tech companies emergence, right? And um, circa 2013, I would say, um, with mm -hmm. more eminent emergence of artificial intelligence or AI, we saw different moves, different sort of trends of, um, you know, HR tech related companies. Um, uh, by the way, um, AI itself, the, the term was perceived back in 1950s. So it took 70 years for, uh, you know, AI to become what we see as AI. Right. And it's mainly because we didn't have the means to create it and, 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 you know, analyze data. And also we didn't have the, the, uh, the computing power for 
you know, to, to use AI in a way we use today. So there's that. Well, actually, I have a very interesting sort of um, experience. I was teaching at Yonsei University, as, as Gordon said, and one of uh, my students, actually, he was an, an exchange student from the United States, and he went back to the United States after his semester, and he, he co-founded a company called um, Onboard IQ. Um, Onboard, it's another interesting term because we didn't have the term back, like, you know, like even, even in the 2000s, right? It's a, it's a new term that we started to use with like startups and do culture onboarding. Well, anyways, um, Onboard IQ, as the name says, um, it was the means to, means for companies to more easily and more and more quickly onboard new hires. And then he pivoted to a, um, a platform or a service to, for, for companies to, to manage uh, more effectively, um, you know, hourly staffs. So that's sort of the uh, like gig economy as we call it today. And then today the companies, you know, pivoted again and changed the name um, into Fountain. And now it's, um, you know, massive sort of high volume recruiting platform for, for global employers. Um, the reason I mentioned this company is this company actually shows, uh, you know, the shift in HR tech per different time period to us. So, um, like I said, in 2000s, it's about like, you know, many job sites, how you know, people and companies find talent and jobs. And then the company is starting to use AI and provide different services and, and provide like specific functions within HR, like, you know, onboarding and then, you know, gig economy and then, um, you know, like globalization of this. So from there today, I can summarize what we're seeing today in terms of HR tech are five actually main pillars. First, like, um, you know, uh, talent acquisition and two, um, talent management, including like, you know, you know performance analytics and all that kind of stuff. And third, um, talent ops operations, like, you know, payrolls and perks management and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, four, uh, talent training and development, and the five, fifth, um, globalized globalization of this sort of um, you know these these segments. So that's sort of the uh, my perspective on HR tag as a general. And I, I believe the many services, almost almost all the serve, uh, products that we're seeing are are can be like fitted into one of these um, you know uh, segments in one way or another or more. Sure. Sure. I, I think that's, I think um, it's, I like the way that you put that chronology uh, on it, because I think that's a really important thing. Like, if you think back a, a little time, then basically, big companies had the, the full, uh, full package HR software, you know, whether it's, you know, Workday, SAP, um, you know, those, those big kind of Oracle, you know, ERP systems, which, which just big companies had which were totally inaccessible for, for small and medium-sized companies, let alone, let alone startups. And I guess what is absolutely fantastic to see in terms of the kind of new development is that you can have, uh, you, know, you know, solutions in very segmented uh, types of areas, according to what you need, also on a, a much more kind of piece by piece or seat by seat kind of basis which makes it much more cost effective. And certainly speaking from my own experience in RDI, we use a number of um, uh, software tools uh, that are, are doing different things for us. And uh, all of them, we are paying on a, on a kind of per person monthly basis. And so that, that's just much more um, convenient and, and easy and allows, even though we are a small company, to be able to take advantage of a much, much bigger platform I think that's that's definitely something from from my perspective is is a good thing. I, I love the way that you've categorized those uh, those five pillars, um, and, and so maybe uh, that could be a good time to kind of um, look a little bit more detail about about the actual uh, kind of source um, of of uh, some investment that's uh, that's been happening. I'd like to uh, just share a, a chart right now. Uh, which we go to here. And so this is, uh, this is uh, an interesting piece of, 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 uh, of data that, uh, that I, that I found in terms of where is the investment going? 
And I think it's absolutely um, on point with, with what you mentioned just before and say about how that there's been a shift from the previous focus, which was all about getting people like the, the war on talent and, and talent acquisition um, being the main focus and being much more on HCM. So HCM is, is human capital management or a HRM, um, another way of t t uh, saying that, and talent management, right? So, so um, kind of fundamentally, the company's perspective um, in terms of where things are going is to be investing on the retention and performance of, of the employees. And that goes to far as to saying well-being and health and happiness of those employees rather than just bums on seats and, and, and getting those people. So I think th this was, was an interesting shift to see for me. Um, in, any, any perspectives on, on kind of how this maybe varies country by country? Do you think this is is a you know this is obviously a global um, aggregation would would you um, expect to see any difference um, in terms of this type of investment country by country so um, in uh, on a high level I think this can apply to pretty much like all the markets in, you know around the globe because like you say like at first we were we are still in a war for talent so obviously lots of lots of dollars pouring into poured into the talent acquisition for sure. And then we need to retain these talents. So these are a uh, uh, very, very like sort of natural, uh, you know, um, depiction of the needs for you know different products. Um, some com uh, some some markets, however, have very distinctive sort of characteristics um, in terms of like labor, labor management, labor related laws and uh, you know regulations. Like Korea could be one example, right? We have somewhat more stricter um, regulations in law um, toward uh, labors um, in Korea. So uh, when when we have like more strict sort of like you know, regulation, we, we tend to be restrictive. Right? Like we don't have much room to play with. So in Korea, we don't see much um, in terms of like talent ops. For example, we we are seeing a few companies, a few, a few good companies are like coming to birth these days, but still rooms are pretty restrictive. So Korea could be a little bit different, but this apply uh, this depict, uh, depiction is a great sort of example of um, how needs are dispersed into different um, areas in HR tech. Mm, absolutely, and and I guess it's it's from I mean this is already a twenty twenty investment value. Um, which in some sense is a reflection of, of the size of the opportunity, but, but also uh, also the, this, the uh, reflection of the, of the importance as well. I mean, uh, this is, uh, you know, if we, if we total up uh, the, the, uh, the investment here, I mean, this is, um, you know, this is, this is pretty much, um, you know, almost $5 billion dollars of investment in global HR tech alone. And so, you know, there might be some people uh, on this session who, who are just surprised that there is that much amount of investment going into uh, global HR tech. Um, and so would you say that that uh, generally HR technology or, or uh, the, you know, as a, as a kind of, uh, as, a, as, a, as an investment um, opportunity, you know, is, is this, uh, a, an area of, of positive outlook? I mean, is it um, a rapidly growing area um, in, in respect to, to other sectors? Yeah, totally. So let's go back to the example of Onboard IQ, right? Well, the company that I just mentioned um, in my uh, previous answer. The company was um, accepted into YC, Y Combinator, one of the you know, best startup accelerators around the world back in um, 2014, I believe. And then from there, the company could raise very quickly a, a Series A round of $9.1 million. And then just in two years after that, um, the company raised again Series B of uh, $23 million. So that's a huge jump in terms of company valuation. Well, of course, this doesn't apply to all the companies around, you know, in, in HR tech. But then again, like, investors see definitely see the opportunities in HR, HR tech and also the demands and needs for you know that the products in HR tech in terms of like how to how to effectively and efficiently um, you know getting and managing people and how the technology can provide values for these people 
right? So I believe that the, um, this space has lots of um, um, you know, opportunities in the future also. And then um, at the intersection with technology, it's, you know, technology only enables more possibilities and, and you know, capabilities to, to the products, right? So, um, you know, I, I, I certainly believe that we are gonna be more opportunities in this, uh, in this space. Okay. Um, but it is interesting to see that in the last couple of years, some of the big, uh, very well-known, well-established tech companies, like the biggest ones on the block, you know, the, the Facebooks, the Googles, they are also interested in this area. We've seen increasing diversification of services in relation to HR. Um, you know, when we think about job postings, most people think about LinkedIn. But, you know, Facebook uh, getting getting in there uh, as well in terms of uh, their job postings. Of course, you know, where's the, the entry point of the entire Internet? It's Google. And so their ability to offer uh, jobs and job postings is, is also, of course, um, based on a phenomenal capacity. Um, you know, does this does this help expand the size of the pie or does this kind of squeeze out uh, the opportunities? How do you see that kind of development uh, in this area? Sure. Um, so like social networks and all these kind of services, that's what I call people facing, you know, product, right? It, it's at the um, intersection with people. And um, all of these people facing technologies or products are fighting against, uh, fighting for the, the share of your time, right? And to capture that and to maintain the share of time, they need to create values for them. So, you know, it gives a reason for, for people to engage with their product, right? Let's go back to um, uh, Craigslist, right? Um, Craig Newmark found that, you know, people really appreciate the, uh, you know, the information on jobs. Right. And actually, that's that's a no brainer. Right. We, we know why people appreciate it. Right. And so for for you know people facing products and, and companies which accumulate lots of data about you. Right. I think it's only easier sort of, you know, a very natural move for them to move into this, this space to create real values for these people. So they keep uh, they stay engaged. Um, does it like increase the size of the market? I do believe so. So, for example, um, let's say, let's say, um, so uh, we, we know Moore's law, right? The computation power of chip doubles every two years, uh, uh, yeah, uh, one and a half years. But then if you take a look at that, um, uh, the size of the data in, 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 in the market, it actually doubles every three months. So if you think about that, it actually outweighs the growth of the technology. Right, and I believe that it's the same thing for for HR for people. Right, um, great talents are only scarce, and it's getting only more scarce in the future. Right, good employers are scarce, and it, it gets only more scarce in the future. So between these two, I think you know when you have the great data to bridge these two sort of you know void sort of needs, I think it's only natural, and, and, and actually it's going to be uh, the market size will be only getting um, an increase in the future. Okay, good. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear that. Uh, that's that that's uh, uh, the positive kind of outcome of their um, involvement in this area. You you talked about um, a, a wealth of data. Let let's get some data on the people who are uh, with us uh, on this webinar now. I'd like to um, run a poll um, with you guys. Uh, it's a very quick question, which is just uh, to to let you guys, uh, for you to tell us um, where it is that you're currently working in. So we'd like to hear from you guys, um, uh, get to know your audience, there we go. So uh, it's popped up now, everybody should be able to see it and just click away and, and, and let me know, um, you know, what type of uh, organization uh, you, you're working in right now. And um, as that kind of ticks over, we'll give that, we'll give that a few minutes to uh, to kind of populate and then and then we'll be able to um, take a look at that. Um, I think you know building on uh, that kind of uh, social uh, you know network uh, crossover um, is, is an interesting one because what, what we've also seen is a lot of platforms um, getting involved and um, and with a kind of a, a platform basis, 
it kind of increases the access for all. And I'm, I'm kind of talking specifically about the development of the gig economy. So the likes of uh, Fiverr, Upwork, um, I think in Korea there's Kmong, um, and obviously I'm sure there's, there's many others. Um, you know, and that, that is kind of, uh, if you like, a kind of democratization uh, of skills. It's, you know, it's a, it's a marketplace of, of skills, allowing people to, to freely put their, um, their, their skills uh, for sale um, uh, on those kind of platforms. Um, and, you know, this is probably going hand in hand with a kind of wider flexibility in terms of workplace and, and working style, you know, uh, we work being a pioneer in terms of co-working spaces, changing the way in which we work. And, and then now COVID-19 in the last uh, year, really accelerating uh, even more dramatically that, that shift. Um, you know, is, it, it, do you find that, um, that this is going to be increasingly commonplace? I mean, I, I'm sure there are people who are in large companies who are thinking, what, what, what the hell is uh, Upwork, Fiverr? You know, I, I don't need a, I don't need a freelancer. That's not what we're about. Um, so, you know, do you think that that is um, kind of we're going to see that kind of crossover um, from what is now relatively niche, but but kind of becoming more mainstream? Is that is that something we're going to see more of? Yes, Gorda. I, I do I do see that um, as a very important sort of emerging trend, especially with uh, with COVID nineteen. Um, even without COVID nineteen, it would have been still like very significant. But um, let's also take a uh, take an example of one company I invested. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, give you the name of the company, but still. Um, so th what this company was doing is the company was building this online space for remote remote workers can can like basically mingle and share the, the feeling of, of a company right group of people right um, there are there are many many attempts like this but for me what this why this company was so interesting was um, if the company was could, could implement the strategy in the right way this actually means for for companies eliminate the physical space and be more flexible in terms of their their talent um, talent profiles, talent management, and also like talent uh, distribution, right? Um, I I love the, the the fact that you use the word democratize, uh, democratizing because I do believe that technology democratize everything. That's that's at the uh, at the core of technology. So uh, when when this happens, uh, the, the company can actually democrat uh, democratize. Um, you know, it's, it's management and then functions and people that goes the same for the people as well. So that means the company can eliminate the physical space and be more flexible, like I said, um, in terms of their, 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 their talent needs. And people can be also more flexible in terms of their engagement with one company or multiple companies. So I believe that technology is fueling um, actually like more gig economies in the future. And COVID-19 was certainly, certainly a catalyst for, for the shift from our sort of legacy view about the talent and a company and into the, into the uh, next one, the new one. So there's that. And also, like I said, you know, like there are, there are many young companies called startups and they have different work, work cultures as well. And this sort of new type of, um, you know, working culture uh, fits perfectly with this new type of companies. So um, with technology, with this new demands for a new world culture and, and like Gen Zs and all this kind of change in, in people's, um, you know, profile, I think we're going to see more of the gig economy. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so we, we got the results in from the poll. Uh, thank you, everybody who, who voted uh, for that. And uh, it seems that we've got a majority of people working in HR, not necessarily in uh, startups or very specifically uh, this particular session about uh, any uh, HR tech startup using using HR uh, using AI I should say so so you know you know maybe we can 
continue to focus on the the you know the the kind of uh, the HR aspects of um, of that, which which kind of leads uh, straight into the second poll, uh, which I would like to uh, to run um, with with everybody. Um, please please do uh, participate in this next one, which is a very simple question. Uh, I'm happy with the HR technology that my company uses. Yes okay. or no? Um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see um, how people feel um, about this, um, about whether uh, they, they're kind of satisfied in that, because I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, we feel that um, maybe career in terms of HR, specifically kind of HR is uh, perhaps uh, not necessarily quite um, at, at kind of global standards. And I think some of the some of the sessions later on in today, we're, we're going to kind of get into that in a bit more detail um, as to some of the developments which are happening in Korea. Um, you know, I, I think that then that gives even kind of more opportunity and it would be interesting to see um, what how people feel um, about the, the, the technology. Um, so it's an overwhelming 71% <laughs> no. Um, um, so I, I, I mean, maybe, uh, you know, some of the questions that uh, people can can kind of ask uh, in the, in the Q&A can be maybe more specific around what exactly is, uh, is difficult for them. I mean, uh, I, as a um, you know, as a, as a CEO of, a, of an HR company, have our internal systems. And then also I get to often work kind of uh, as an implant in clients' uh, systems. So sometimes when we are uh, working on recruitment for, for a particular company, we will gain access into their system and be a kind of embedded uh, kind of uh, uh, service provider seeing how uh, and seeing the system that they use. So uh, I, kind of even though, uh, you know, we have our own that I know well, I also have had visibility of most of the main um, talent acquisition tools which are, which are out there from different companies um, as they use them and, I, and I'm working with different clients. So it, it will be interesting to see um, that overwhelmingly people are not happy. Um, so, so maybe there is a, a lot to be done and, and whether it's a kind of a lack of technology or what they do have just, just kind of isn't, isn't fit for purpose. Um, you know, that maybe is a good uh, time to ask a question about, you know, what's at the cutting edge uh, and say, what are you seeing um, any kind of examples of, of, of companies or technology that are kind of changing things? I mean, if I could just uh, give an example, the, the rise of video interviewing um, has just shot through the roof um, in the recruiting space in, in the last couple of years. So uh, interviewing, and not just like we are having a, a kind of a video conference, but actually a remote recorded self recorded video interview, which is then kind of posted uh, back to the company as the application. So it becomes a video application. That's something that um, is very good at reducing bias um, at, you know, in the application process, which I think is only a good thing for everybody. Um, how about uh, you? Have, have you seen other examples of, of this? Yeah, so um, that's a great question, Gordon. But before that, well, actually, I like the poll and I like the results okay. as well, right? Like two third people um, don't like the tools that they're using. Um, in, in tech space, we have this nasty term, um, nasty word called um, So it's like okay. you try to do something with existing solutions and you just keep bumping into like, you know, hurdle bar barriers and you pull your hairs and then like, fuck it, right? And then that's actually an opportunity for, for young companies like startups, right? You build, you know, something to solve problems. So I, I actually like, you know, this, the, the poll. So, you know, and actually that's why I said, you know, the, the market size, the total market size of HR tech will be only increasing because, because of this. So I, I really like the result of poll. And in terms of like cutting edge, um, I think it's on the sort of similar, um, you know, life cycle of the technology. Like, for example, we are seeing lots of um, uh, attempts in AI spaces called lightweight AI. So that means, you know, you, you sort of make the AI, the, uh, the um, you know, models um, lighter, 
so it can it can deploy to you know like your your your, your phones right so that means this phone now can be a great um, companions of yours or a tool for you to sort of gauge different things that you could engage before on your phone and actually help you to do something. So um, lightweight AI and, you know, AR, VR, and also like, for example, this video conference, now we have like many technologies that can actually realize your emotions and, you know, your, your, your feelings on a real time basis based on your facial expressions and, and voice and tones and moods and stuff like that. So these are technologies are, are there. And also, um, cloud is another thing. Like cloud actually enables SaaS, like software as a service um, new products. So you know more SaaS that you can very easily um, adopt and you know maybe switch into the other platform later if you don't like it. So um, SaaS and cloud will be more um, eminent sort of technology, like you know foundation technology for different AR, AR, HR products. And also, that gives you more flexibility to be remote, right? So um, all of these like um, lightweight AI, cloud and being more flexible in your, in your like basically working culture could be, be a sort of like leading um, uh, trend in terms of um, at the intersection between the HR tech and the technology. And also um, what I'm seeing right now, what, what I'm particularly interested in is what I call um, uh, uh, condensed learning or mm -hmm. uh, value-based learning or unlearning even. So. Okay. Traditionally, we were going to school to get new stuff, like to learn new stuff. But companies need different skill sets per different like sort of stages in their life cycles and, and function. And some companies are very cleverly providing this condensed learning, so your your staff can unlearn what, what he or she has learned before and learn new things, like very very rapid. So these are are the the, the, the sort of the trends that I'm you know uh, uh, interested in um, you know following. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And I, I certainly come across uh, people on a daily basis who have a lot to unlearn because they have been uh, stuck in one company for their entire career and they have a, a, a very kind of almost uh, you know, traumatic type of uh, work experience going on where they are kind of trapped. They are incredibly valuable to that particular organization but relatively unemployable to other organizations because of their uh, lack of flexibility. So I think that any way which, uh, which um, learning and development, especially personal professional development, can be more um, you know, uh, bite-sized, uh, mobile-based is, is a cool, of course, a great way to be able to do that is, is definitely a, a good thing. So let's let's bring it round to the like the career situation now, um, and you know, do you see that uh, there are uh, some some good cases of uh, Korean HR startups kind of going overseas, taking their tech uh, and and expanding into the world? Uh, likewise, um, you know, are there still very large? players quite ubiquitous in other areas of the world who are not yet in Korea or not available in Korea. Um, you know, is it is it a one way or, or do we see it kind of going equally both ways? Uh, it'd be interested to hear to hear what you what you think about that. Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Gordon. Um, so I see I do see both like, you know, both inbound and outbound um, in terms uh, in perspective of Korea, um, like job sites. Um, they're pretty much like, you know, regional now. And all, some companies are even global in terms of their their reach of the you know the companies and, and people. So there's there's that. But also at the same time, um, what's really interesting is um, the market. You know, when you say global market, it sounds like one, but actually it's it's dissected into many sub markets, and these markets are actually, actually very distinctive in its own right. So um, I, I think in terms of HR tech, it's it's sort of like difficult for you to like you know, expand your, your business outside your home market if you're in a certain sort of like, you know, in, in space within HR text. Like for example, if you're in, in uh, people ops, for example, like, you know, like I said, payments and perks management, it's, it's kind of hard for you to, um, you know, globalize your business. Say if you're a US company, like what you do in your home market won't work in Korea. So it's, it's fragmented. So um, I do see a, uh, attempts both ways, 
But I think HR tech is sort of like distinctive in its own right in, because of this like, you know, distinctive characteristics. What really interests, is, uh, interests me is this. Is this. So with, with startups, they have sort of different needs in terms of their, their talent, right? And some companies really aggressively expand their business or, or, or uh, presence outside the home market. And sometimes that means they need to understand the different characteristics of this other market that they're expanding into, right? So what I'm seeing is these very like clever people are in that space. So the company can like really easily establish their, their presence or even like even without entities there. So, you know, they can have to step on the ground in this, this different market. That's very interesting also. And, and in, in, in implementing this sort of model, you will need a lot of different technologies and you will need a lot, a lot of the different elements in, uh, from this, the five pillars that I mentioned in, in the beginning. So that's why I say like, you know, I, I put that in the uh, fifth pillar of, of the five pillars, like globalization of this, this segment. And I think it's, it's growing like, like pretty, pretty quickly. Okay, uh, it's uh, thank you for mentioning about about the that that the, the different uh, areas that that are kind of fragmented. Uh, I was listening to to uh, an interview last week, and they used the term Frankenstack. <laughs> uh, and this Frankenstack, I, I mean, maybe it's it's not just about HR tech, it maybe applies to, to all, all tech, but basically this is the kind of concept that the way that Frankenstein is built with a hodgepodge of put this on here, bolt that on there, buy something else, get that, shove that in there, and that a lot of companies find that they have uh, different systems uh, for different things some of which are integrated with each other, some are not, some of which are partially customized, some are not. And so consequently, what they find is that they, uh, you know, maybe they have one entire system that, that tries to do everything, but is actually not good at doing any one of the particular things that they need to do. And so they have in what is essentially nothing which is really fit for purpose. Since uh, most of the people that, that respond on the poll said that they are in HR, uh, I'm sure they'd love to be able to hear some advice on, on how to kind of overcome that. Um, you know, any, any, any kind of tips on, on how to avoid getting into that situation, which might then be expensive to, to get out of? Right, right. So Frankenstein is, uh, is, is interesting. It certainly is not only, um, in, in HR, but in pretty much all the companies that actually wants to go digital. Um, you know, we have this very, almost a buzz, buzzword, it, it goes like digital transformation. And frankly, that happens when the company wants to go digital without clear sort of roadmap about where they're going, uh, which vehicle that they take and which field that they use. And also it happens when the company the, uh, sort of lacks the, uh, the internalized like DNA of like digital. So let me, let me break it down. So let's say a, a CEO of company A one day just decided that the, the company would go to go digital, right? So the, comp, the the CEO will say, you know what, we're gonna use AI in our you know operations, and we're gonna be great company, right? But in this statement, he lacks everything, right? So let me let me break it down. Like I said, AI need lots of you know proper data to train the machine. And to have the, the data, you need actually very good pipeline to you know, collect, analyze, and feed the data and later get insights from. And also you will need different products to actually you know, um, run this, this, this initiative, including like many different um, software uh, products. And, and also, um, you know, when you use AI, there are two things. Sometimes AI is not the general solution for all your headaches. Some, some headaches could be solved better with you know, non-AI solutions. So there's one thing. And if you use AI, then actually a lot of people don't know that AI is not just one time of deployment of, of the technology. It needs constant ongoing remodeling, retraining of that, that model. So without understanding this, of, you know, of course you, you don't have the budget to do it. You, know, you already have the very you know, massive system and again, like you don't know what you want to achieve out of all this, all this stuff. Like, is it is it the revenue growth? Is it is it you know cost this, uh, deduction? Like, what, what do you want to get out of this whole, whole things? So, in order to avoid this, so um, 
I'm sorry I'm, if I'm if I'm getting a little bit too deeper, but this is the area no, that I no. need to get into. So to avoid this, what you need is you need sort of internalized, um, you know, DNA of digitalization top down, right? You that has to come from the CEO. And second, you need a great architect that can actually build and and uh, you know implement this this. Uh, actual effective solution from you know, data pipeline to the end goal. And three, you need to understand that this is not a one time off project, but a ongoing sort of initiative to really turn your company into digital. Without this, you're going to get like, you know, patched up, you know, product with like different, different solutions. So um, at, the, at an individual level, like, you know, SaaS is great. You can try different stuff, but when the company wants to sort of like, you know, get rid of the, the legacy system and implement a new system um, under sort of this, this frag, uh, flag of like digital transformation. This is what happens and this is how you can avoid this whole situation. Okay. So so the kind of the, the retrospective trying to change what exists, trying to adapt is is what leads to this, this you know, uh, unworkable situation. What you're saying is that that really stuff has to be designed from from uh, the top down at a kind of absolute fundamental way in a, in a potentially a totally different way in order to to get everything working cohesively and um, in the best possible way yeah good i mean you wouldn't you wouldn't believe this so when company wants to go digital their approach is usually we want to go digital so you you would have to ask them like so what do you want to achieve out of this is it the revenue growth is it is it the cost reduction? Is it a new business generate? Like you you have to ask. Them. So that's the starter, and that has to come from the leadership, right? Right. Okay. So from the leadership, top down, architect to oversee all these like different um, you know structure of the the initiatives, and you have to understand that this is an ongoing um, initiative, not a one time of delivery. Got it. Got it. Well, I want to. Uh welcome the, the the guests on the uh, on this session to be able to ask some questions we we promised from from the start that this uh we would uh always be be open to questions so uh i hope that uh we do have some questions coming in now now is the time to to get typing um just click the the q a button um at the bottom and uh, you'll be able to to answer your uh, to ask your question um, and we can kind of uh, go go through and hopefully get through as, as many as we can in the in the remaining uh, time that we have. So the, the the first question that we have is, um, and I will answer this live. Um, how should HR be using big data effectively when using HR tech? Mm. So um, so first of all, big data. The real question is, is it really a big data? You know, like when, you, when your data size is about, I don't know, like 100 gig, uh, gigabytes, that's not really big data. When we say big data, we're talking about the data of like 15, like terabytes. That's, that's, a, that's a big data with, that we talk about. So like I said, um, when, you, when you want to implement your, your data to your, your product and operation, you have to understand that um, what do you want to achieve out of this, right? The question goes like, what do we do with the big data in HR tech, right? So we first need to set the clear goal. What, what do we want to achieve out of this? And then we, we can decide on the angle we should take on, on the data that we have. And then we need to understand, is it really a big data? If there's a big data, uh, deep learning is a great sort of, you know, uh, 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 you know, technology that we can apply. But if it's not a big data, then, you know, just simple machine learning or different um, approaches are better. So, um, like I said, you need to set your goal and that determine that dictates the, the angle that you need to take a look, um, uh, that, that you need to take on the data that you have. And from there, then you can build, you know, your your sort of, your, your own strategy. So that's, uh, that's, that's yeah, no, I, I totally um, uh, get everything that, that you mentioned. So I, I guess if this was the perspective of an in-house HR manager in one company, they're probably not talking about big data mm. okay. in, in this case. It, it's it's probably, the, you know, a, a scaled down 
um, from from uh, what what you were mentioning, which means a, a simpler uh, solution uh, would would probably be fit for purpose. Right. So um, you know, if if you're an, an in-house HR uh, manager or team leader, then obviously your data can improve uh, improve the uh, the quality of the talents that you're that you're you know acquiring from your applicants pool because now you understand like which sort of characteristics in, in certain application or applicants um, determine this, this, this applicant's future performance. And also you can get like empirical data uh, or empirical insights about, um, you know, like what's the signal of this great employee leaves, you know, they, they show prior to their departure and stuff like that. So um, it depends on what, what data that you collect. And if you have enough data, then you can you can apply uh, you can you can adopt data science to take a look at that and and in, like um, you, you know sort of infer the insights from the data set. So um, data is a, a new goal, new new oil more like. Absolutely, we've got more questions coming in. Uh, so let, let's move on to the next one. So is it is it better to have a single unified system for all of my HR processes, or should we look for the best solutions for each area and then integrate them later? So that I think reflecting to what we were discussing just before. Yeah, um, this is a great question. Um, at the at an individual level, I like I like flexibility, and that's what lots of like SaaS products provide, right? You know, you can select the pro, uh, products that you that you need for your different needs. And also, what's what's really fascinating is this is there are even like this this product that helps you choose which product that you that you that you select, right? So. Uh, you, you type in your needs and you know, this algorithm shows the best sort of product that you, that the machine thinks you can, you know, you should use. So um, at an individual level, I like the flexibility, I like the freedom, but at a company level, then, you know, you just need to understand that it's, it's an ongoing, um, you know, initiatives. It's never one time of delivery. So that means um, we, we, we're talking about the software. So obviously, you know, we're talking about reiterations and, and you know, like switching to other sort of means and technologies. So it's, it's not static. It's very dynamic at an individual level. I like, I like you know, flexibilities and, and freedom per different needs for, for these people. At a, comp, a company level, we just need to understand that this is an ongoing um, initiative. Understood, understood. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's that it's a kind of almost it's a pain point that affects different people. If if you're the person in the company's IT dealing with that, those compatibilities, then that's your pain point. Whereas if you are the, the the HR user who has a system that doesn't help you do what you got to do, that's your pain point. So so I guess it's it, it's there's always different pain points for for different people. Right. The next question. The next question is uh, from your experience dealing with tech providers, what, what, what must we do to ensure HR, HR technology projects succeed in terms of time to implement meeting deadlines, et cetera? So the, the implementation side. Right. Um, so um, I don't know. I don't know if I can frame this, this answer into one sort of like one one answer um, because um, there are, there are lots of things to, to consider. Um, but when you say choose a tech provider, um, usually what you get is is pretty pretty good period of you know trying out right. You can you can try out different products. So obviously that's that's one thing you could you could leverage on. And also um, you know, you, you need to you need to get your at, at a certain level. You need to get your team sort of like consensus on the on the products. So I would say you 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 would have like sort of like three sixty degree angle on the product and, and you know reviews from your all your team members, and and you know you you try out the, the product and see how they can how well it can be integrated into your your legacy system. So that's uh, that's my very plain answer to that. But um, if you have any follow up question, I'd be more happy to more than happy to. Um, answer the question okay and and then in terms of uh, this is kind of a specific one about investment um do you consider uh you you're obviously based for uh, it's an la based uh vc um looking at asian founders so so i guess that you're you're trying to take uh from korea over to the u.s market is that is that is that right in terms of your your main area of work, 
So 541 Ventures uh, invests in deep tech and hard tech and also AI powered business enable, uh, enablement solutions. Um, so, and, and in terms of geography, you invest in US companies with Asian founders or Asian companies in Asia, but still disrupt, uh, disrupting on a global scale. So we're we are globally investing. All right. And so, so the question was about uh, the regulation in terms of um, going from Korea to the US or, or from the US to Korea. You know, are there significant barriers in one or the other? Is, is one easier than the other? Um, maybe that's a, that's something you could talk about for a, a very, very long time, but, but uh, exactly. just, just briefly, perhaps. Right. So, um, when you, when you want to be in a certain market, be there as early as possible. I have many companies that wants, that want to go like overseas through something we call flipping, you know, that means you sort of. You know, you, you, you move your incorporated entity into, his, you know, the other jurisdiction and um, passing certain points in your, in your lifestyle, uh, life cycle of, of your company, it gets very difficult, very painful because usually for, for tax purposes. So um, without the, the techni technicalities is very plain, but, you know, more, more than often time than not, you know, the, the tax implication is very, very difficult to deal with. So when you want to be in a certain market, be there as early as possible. That's, that's my, um, you know, answer. And also, um, you know, if I say that some people ask me like, oh, you know, you're, you're a startup. And if you, if you're starting in a new, you know, uh, in, in some ecosystem, then you know nothing about, you know, in, in the ecosystem, you know, nothing there, like you, you get the help, like, is it, is, isn't it too, too risky? I say, do you have them in Korea? You still have them, you, you don't still have them in Korea anyway. So for me, the risk levels are pretty much the same. So okay. you want to be somewhere like be there as, as possible. Right, right. And I, I'm really curious, is there any kind of service that's out there Maybe it's something that, that you, in fact, offer yourself, I, I don't know, which is a kind of consulting to help companies decide what is best. Like if I talk to one provider, they're going to tell me their, theirs is best. If I talk to another, uh, they're going to tell me theirs best. If I do general um, internet search, I'll find top five lists for 2020 of, of payroll providers. I'll find top 20 lists of, um, uh, you know, performance management systems, whatever. Is there actually any kind of service that can actually help HR managers navigate this and, and actually have a better understanding of what, what could fit their needs in an objective way as opposed to a, a kind of subjective sales sales way? You mean like um, uh, sort of like territory selection, right? Uh, in terms of if, if I was a company and I was, uh, you know, and I was thinking about about my my, my tech stack and, and what's not working and what, what I could do better. Is there actually a service that can come in and kind of advise me on the strategy of that? Hmm. I don't, I'm afraid I don't have the exact, uh, you know, straight answer to that, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to take a look at it and get back to you later. Sure. I mean, it's not a service that I'm aware of. Um, so uh, I, it was just as I was thinking about, you know, HR managers who feel that their HR technology is not good enough, but maybe also don't have uh, the awareness or, or ability to really know what's out there, um, you know, in that sense. You know, in my own experience, I've implemented a system on a friend's recommendation. He said, you know, he's running his business over in, in Switzerland. He loves using this system. Try it out. Sure enough, I tried it out. Love it all good. I didn't even look at any others. So that was obviously very fortunate to, to kind of get that fixed in. But I was just thinking in a, in a broader sense, um, whether it, maybe that's an opportunity for, for somebody to, uh, to go into uh, if, if there are all these, these needs um, from, from HR. Yeah, like um, I said, if that's your, if that's your fucking moment, then go ahead, I'd be able to build a great service around it. <laughs> Let's see. So, um, we, we, we've uh, pretty much uh, coming to the end of the of the session now, um, so uh, I'd like to kind of uh, wrap up. Um, it's it's been really great uh, to be able to talk about this uh, this area, kicking off the the People Matters conference. And you know, I, I you know, in talking to people, I don't always expect 
to learn uh, so much as I did in this last uh, in this last uh, session. I, I've made notes um, about some of the terminology that you've used that was new to me. Um, you know, the five pillars that that you outlined, I think, is, is a great way to look at HR tech. Um, this lightweight AI, I think, is, is also very interesting that, um, you know, there's, there's new ways to, to look at how the emerging tech um, and of course, the often forgotten mobile based scenarios, right? I mean, uh, so much is happening on mobile um, and that's probably still a very, very un unserved. Um, LND, which is obviously one of the areas that RDI is operating in and this, this whole concept of condensed learning uh, and unlearning, I think is definitely something that has a lot more um, uh, development opportunity. And then the big, the big one, if you like, the the elephant in the room, which which so many companies are struggling with, is digitalization or um, you know going digital and, and and as as a process, a nightmare process, which which um, you know is is allowing the digital natives, the, the companies born in the new environment, to just race ahead and, and overtake. I think is 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 really interesting. So. Thank you so much uh, for, for sharing your insights uh, and expertise on, on this area. Uh, Unse, very much appreciate uh, you, your participation. Thank you for having me. This was a, gr a great pleasure. Can I just add one more thing like very quickly? So Absolutely, please do. I always think that, um, you know, HR or I actually don't like the term HR and it just makes you know, people sound like, you know, a, a you know, piece of assets, a, right? right. So, um, <laughs> People are, well, my background is in strategy. And, you know, when people think about strategy, they usually think about like, you know, spreadsheet and PowerPoints and all this kind of like cool stuff. But then again, it's about, you know, for strategists, the company's capability come from the process. And um, after that, you know, if you, if you ask like, okay, so who runs the pro uh, this, this process is people. Right, so strategy is, is all, always about the people, so it's about the leadership. And like I said, I don't believe in the concept of, of a company as a physical sort of entity. It's it's only an intellectual concept of that you know of group of people toward a, a, a shared goal. So um, I, I think I think technology could be a great in, enabler, especially in these days, because we are really seeing separations between people and, you know, it's, it's harder for, you know, people to so, sort of like interact and feel, feel this common sense of uh, company. So um, I, I think really important area for, for people, uh, people tech in the future is how we can actually share this common sense of company with like many, many people in, in the company. So the company can perform better sort of you know, process to for, for you know, better performance. So um, for me, people tech is not just about, you know, this, like, you know, one or more of this, this pillars, but it's, it's more like a total package that can actually, you know, produce better um, outcome a, as a company. So um, if, if you, if you, if you, you know, sort of see um, people tech or, or people related technology in, from this perspective, then, you know, find the best sort of you know, solutions that can really, um, you know, implement this, this view in, in your work. And I think, I think we can have like, you know, much better sort of um, environment um, in our work and our, our clients' uh, our work sites as well. So I just wanted to quickly add that. Thank you so much for having me. That's absolutely great. And say so thank you so much. That, that really does encapsulate uh, everything that we that we wanted to kind of get across in this session and the reason for for having this session as, as a part of our People Matters conference. So thank you so much again. Thank you everybody else for for joining uh, in this first session.